So have you heard about this, um, like, coronavirus shit? Have, have I heard of it? Yeah. Yes, I've heard, yeah, I've heard of the coronavirus, yes. All right, what- COVID-19 is yeah. what they're calling it. What could, what could you possibly have to add to the conversation about it at this point? It sucks. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, this is uh, all the space in between. My name is Billy. No, no, we are no, no, not no. starting it, the episode like this. It sucks for me is what I was going to say. It sucks for you yes. in particular. Uh-huh. It, it sucks for you. The, right. the agoraphobe who uh, works from home, uh, jo- job is in, in, in danger, uh-huh. uh, st- stays in his house. All right. Well, okay. But, but why does it suck for you? Uh, well, I was going to say... Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was going to be in a much, like much more energetic when I said it. So just like imagine, oh. it was like before you like shit all over what I was about to say. <laughs> so I guess for the listeners at home, like imagine what I'm saying now, but like it not sounding like I had like all the wind just taken out of my sails uh, for just having yeah. an opinion, you know. But what I was going to say, yes, I've got like an album coming out soon. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So I'm just curious mm-hmm. as to what this will do maybe on a promotional level. Oh, yeah. okay. It's because I feel like <laughs> maybe people are going to be wrapped up in their own kind of a grocery panic. <laughs> right, it's going to get lost in the fray. Yeah. yeah. No mm-hmm. one's going to want to hear about I recorded an album. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of <laughs> wrapping up. Now, also, Animal Crossing is dropping in mere oh, days. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. So, I just, I feel like there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> and maybe now is not the time to kind of raise my hand. <laughs> I think <laughs> now, <laughs> now is the time not to <laughs> say, hey, can I have a moment? And I raise my fucking hand. Can I can I have your attention, please? <laughs> well, like, no. Gamers and humans alike. <laughs> my two audiences. <laughs> Fuck. Gamers, Gamers and, and humans. No. <laughs> Welcome to All the Pains Two. My name is Mitch. My name is Billy. Welcome to another episode of this, our podcast. Hmm. A nice, relaxing mm-hmm. Sunday yeah. evening oh, recording. Of course. Um. How have you been? Uh, oh, this week? Yeah. Oh. And I am talking about gaming. Oh. Yeah, I'm talking about Spyro the Dragon. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did 120% complete the first Spyro the Dragon but it, but it, game. But it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did so, we 100% it? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. We 120% we 120% it. We 120%ed it. it. We Nasty got Nork is... Every single fucking gem in that game. Nasty Nork is... Dead. No more. He's dead. Gno- Gnasty Gnork is Gno Gamor. <laughs> no one will understand that unless they've played <laughs> Spyro the unless Dragon. Unless they've played it recently right, as well. Yeah, like, gonna... en- recently enough to remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we did 120% of that game. So thanks. Our quarantine's going great. Cheers. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, I am I I am acknowledging that I, I really I really do speak of a place of like major privilege when I, I'm just like I was kind of built for this. I've been agoraphobic (laughs) for so long. So my life, you know, the friends who who are who are just like, how are you holding up? And I'm like, how are you holding up? Your your life changed. (laughs) Mine hasn't yet. My Instacart orders are late. And that's it. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. People are being like so nice and kind and considerate, being like, just just checking in with everyone. Just how how are you guys doing? I know it's a hard time. You're like, Oh, I'm the same. Yeah. Thanks. I'm um, good. No one's cutting my hours. How are you? Like, yeah. are you are you, you going to be able to pay your rent? Like, mm-hmm. that's that's terrifying, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. I don't go out. I don't go to clubs. I don't go to bars. I don't go to large gatherings. Mm-hmm. And I work from home. Yeah. And this is part of work is speaking into microphones in this isolated room. Yes. So uh, feeling pretty normal. Mm-hmm. Feeling pretty good. But I, I do hope that everyone out there is doing okay. And, I, you know, more than anything, I hope this fucking food panic stops oh, God. soon. Yeah. Because it's just getting ridiculous. Everyone's stress eating toilet roll. Yeah, and that's what we're doing, which yeah. is not – which actually if you eat enough of it, you don't need to wipe your ass. <laughs> Because it just comes out as toilet it's paper. Wiping. Yeah. Yeah. That's they're thinking ahead. They're in twenty twenty five right now. We're over here eating 
you know, $3 cans of Amy's. <laughs> They're over there fucking munching down on toilet paper exclusively. <laughs> Cleans your insides. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> the perfect food, toilet paper. It's like an like ultimate what... like two-in-one, you know? Like a two-in-one shampoo. No, this is a two-in-one shampoo. <laughs> this is no like, emphasis on the poo. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, But yeah, we hope everyone is doing okay out there. Yeah. We got an interesting episode. I'm sorry, were you going to say something? I was just going to say... In my opinion, uh-huh. the perfect time to listen to podcasts. Yeah, and also maybe the perfect time to listen to an album. <laughs> Fuck on the album yeah. thing. <laughs> uh, it's dropping actually kind of soon. Kind of soon. Sending the masters off any day now. Yeah, so. we, we don't, don't ask me for the date, but it's soon. It's pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking at 16 tracks, mm-hmm. so it's a mm-hmm. lengthy little boy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> God, I hope the promotion for that goes okay. Um, but... Yeah, in my opinion, perfect podcast listening time. I would say so too. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. You can, you can pretend like we're in the room with you. Yeah, and then we're all hanging out. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. We're all getting germs on each uh, other. This is an email reading podcast. That's true. Where you send us your emails, delectable little dill pickles, mm-hmm. and we uh, sort through those conundrums every week. Yeah, and pick a few for the show. Read them out, whether they be uh, relationship advice or art advice or just a funny story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we read them on the show and yes. then we talk about them and then we say goodbye mm-hmm. and then we play Spyro. Yeah. And that's that's how our day goes. That's, <laughs> that's our routine. That's it all. God, I hope that was it. Or, <laughs> God, I wish that. I hope that was it. God, I hope that's it. I hope nothing comes up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish that were it. After this, I have to listen to us talk again. I know. Just to mix it all. Yes. I'm going to go for like no special effects or anything on this episode. All right, I'm going to keep you in check. Nothing gonna, wacky. Nothing crazy. Nothing for the YouTube channel. Uh, just the normal effects on yeah. the questions. No no like clown boiling yeah. noises, even though it will be difficult. Yeah, it was so yeah. hard for me not to add one right there. But, <laughs> but my, my, I did, I, my vocal effect was perfect. Yeah. So you don't need to. There you go. Shall we get into the first question? Let's do that. I believe it's called A Nerdy Little Pickle. Mm-hmm. Is that the one? Yes. I'll be reading this first one. It's called A Nerdy Little Pickle. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Sorry. I <laughs> start reading a random, <laughs> a Google email. Where are you? There we go. Uh, this is called A Nerdy Little Pickle, and it goes, Hello, you dirty little podcasters. I want to go to medieval times. <laughs> It's something that's been on my bucket list for a while now, and one finally opened up in a t- in the town where I live. Here's the pickle. I'm allergic to horses. <laughs> <laughs> like my lungs completely stop working allergic. Miserable memories plague me of going to the rodeo in my childhood, and I once was escorted out of Dolly Parton's stampede due to, you know, nearly dying. How do I survive an evening at medieval times? Do I secretly puff my inhaler every five minutes or do I accept the fact that I was not built for such entertainment? I stay jacked in so I never have to jack out this person's name. P.S. Y'all are great. Thank you for providing laughter and inspiration in the art you create. Thank you for writing in. Okay, first things first. Neither of us knew what medieval times was. We're still not entirely clear on uh-huh. that, right? I think I've seen it referenced in uh, other things. It's this It's this thing that opens up. You go, it, is a restaurant? It's this like, is what I was going to say. You go and eat I and thought, there's entertainment. I thought it was a restaurant. Uh-huh. So then it really threw me off when they said the problem is that they're allergic to horses. Right. Uh, and then I thought maybe it's like one of those horse meat hamburger situations. <laughs> maybe they serve horse. Yeah. And they're like, and well, they I can't, can't eat that. I can't so eat very I'm, much. I'm allergic. So then at Dolly Parton's thing where they served horse, <laughs> I, <laughs> I nearly keeled over. I have, was up to it's my throat in horse. <laughs> yeah. I was just finger licking, just eating every last drop of horse at Dolly Parton's Stampede, which is a restaurant chain in North Dakota. Which is, I think, also a restaurant chain yeah. started by Dolly Parton. We can only assume. Uh, are we Googling medieval times? Yeah, because my, uh, my other option was that it was like a restaurant, but for horses, where the horses could eat, could eat as well. But now, but now I'm thinking some kind of Ren Faire scenario. I'm now I'm more familiar with this. If you go to Medieval Times and you go to Images, okay, yeah, yes, this is exactly what I was imagining. So you go, there's okay. like entertainment in, oh, in the middle shit, of it. There's jousting. Yeah, there's jousting, and of course they're using horses. Oh fuck! No wonder they want to go. I want to go. Where's the nearest Medieval Times? So just 
Imagine like a carnival or a circus. Okay. But yes, it's like a ring. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's like a circus, mm-hmm. but uh, medieval themed. Yes. And all the entertainment in the middle is people like uh, jousting Holy and shit, on horses. Sword fighting. And, you can see it, a man get oh, beheaded God. there. Did you hear that? Yes. Mate. <laughs> like, that tasted like not breakfast. I just burped on my own mouth. It tasted like three dinners ago. Why? Why is that? <laughs> Why is that still in there? Wow. How, how come? <laughs> anyway, um, medieval times. Okay. So now we know what it is. Okay. There are horses there. Yes. It doesn't look like there's that many horses there. but It, it does... doesn't look like you would touch the horses, but I guess it also doesn't look like you touch the horses at a rodeo. Rodeo. But there's way or, more horses or, or at a Dolly rodeo. Or Dolly Parton's, whatever this thing was. There's way more horses at a rodeo than at this place. Uh, like how many? <laughs> too many, first of all. It's a rodeo. <laughs> There's with too rodeo many horses. Is not part of my culture. Neither is Dolly Parton. <laughs> um, there's too many horses at a rodeo. Okay. It seems like there's less here, but just looking at the Google images, it seems like a place that would immediately smell like horse. That's true. When you walked in. It does look like it would smell like horse and shit and hay, mm-hmm. which is what you want to do when you're eating. What you want to smell. When you're eating food. Yeah. Because as we it's all great. know, if you can smell something, it's in the air. <laughs> you uh, so in your you're mouth. definitely yeah, tasting yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely tasting the horse hay shit. So... Maybe just not go to this shit. <laughs> but it, it, there's swords there. There's swords and jousting there. Okay. All right. Do you know I'm allergic to horses? Are you? Yeah. Huh. It's my I didn't wild know that. card I'm pulling out. Did you know that I'm allergic to horses? No, we've never been near a horse together. <laughs> so I guess I didn't know that. The first, I've known that I've been allergic to horses for a long time because I'm I'm allergic to basically every animal, right? Mm-hmm. And then when I when I came to California in 2014, I stayed on uh, I stayed on a farm for a little while. Right, they had a lot of horses there. They were like, "Get on it, bareback, it's a hippie farm. They don't do saddles." Right. I was like, "No, I can't. I'm allergic." And they were like, "That's not real." Yeah, you can't be allergic to horses. No one's allergic to horses. So I'm backed up. Being, obviously, people are because we got someone email in. So uh-huh. I'm going to phone them up and be like, well, "Obviously, people are allergic." Anyway, yeah, they were like, "That's how- not real." Get on the horse. It'll be fine. I got on the horse. I was wearing very, very short, like Daisy Duke type. Nice. <laughs> Explain it more to me. Denim shorts. You're in Daisy Dukes on a horse. My whole legs are out. Whoa. Wrapped around the horse. Her I'm whole. on it for literally about 30 seconds before I start coming out in hives all down nice. my legs. Nice. No, not nice. Her bad. ass swelled up no. like a balloon. <laughs> Her ass became enormous. Like getting two perfect bee stings on each ass <laughs> yeah. cheek. <laughs> and you're just there in the dirt on all fours. It's just like perfect implants. As, as your Daisy Dukes are almost <laughs> are almost ripping from you. <laughs> I can't believe I wasn't there for this. No, it was not sexy. It was bad. I just noticed my hand is kind of in my pants. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I, I did that for comfort, but Get now who knows. Get yeah. it out. Just for safety. I'm going to put it on my lap. <laughs> I'm going to put it far away from I'm gonna myself. Start, yeah. <laughs> This is a dangerous game we're playing. <laughs> anyway, I ca- I burst out in hives all over my legs, and uh-huh. they were like, "Oh my god, you you weren't lying." We like they thought I was lying because I was like scared to get on the horse, right? But I wasn't. I was h- scared of what would happen. That was that. And then I had to go lay in the dark with, for for like two days. Couldn't L- couldn't couldn't walk. My legs were all hived. Why did you have to lay in the dark? Well, it didn't have to be dark. It just was. It was very oh. hot. So it, you know. Blocked oh, out the, the sun. Curtain. Yeah, yeah acted okay. like a little vampire. Yeah, yeah. So That's anyway, funny. I'm also allergic to horses. And that was the time that you and I met. Yes. Back in, hmm. That the hives had settled by then. I noticed your ass was looking quite, <laughs> quite giant and red. Actually, <laughs> Stop. don't tell people that. <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah, the first time we met, your ass was enormous <laughs> and red, and you were wearing little Daisy Dukes. <laughs> And lie. you did smell of a horse. No, I, that that bit might that be true. That part was true, that yeah. That might be true. <laughs> God. Anyway, I'm also allergic to horses. I also have to puff my inhaler all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we have a cat that sleeps on the bed and it, it nearly kills me every other day. You and went, yet I allow it. You went three days without an antihistamine recently. Yeah. And I thought that would be it. It almost <laughs> killed me. Yeah, that was really bad. You truly... Yeah. Needed those things. So you are allergic to horses. Would you go to medieval times? Oh, fuck yeah, I go to medieval times. I would just take a lot of antihistamines beforehand. Yeah, take, they're over take, there take saying the inhalers they're, with they're, me. they're inhaler, yeah. Antihistamines would probably help a lot too. Yeah. And probably just go. 
You know, you're you're not locked you in there once you walk. You got one of those jabby things? Maybe maybe get one of those. <laughs> An EpiPen? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't I don't really know what they're for, but like it might help. No, if you're so so allergic that you need an EpiPen to be <laughs> around a horse, go. you shouldn't go to medieval <laughs> times. Don't go, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like saying, I uh, yeah, I have a, a awful little nut allergy. Should I go to the the planters factory, you know, <laughs> and meet and hug Mr. Peanut? It's like, no, definitely don't do that. Well, you can't do that anymore because he died. So I think they that. brought him back. Oh, wait, no, there was a baby that was born. Oh, wh- huh? <laughs> yeah, but it's this, I don't know, it's this thing. Catch me on play. Yeah. yeah, catch me on play. <laughs> the montage of tonight, I'm just like going <laughs> off. It's just, <laughs> Mr. Peanut's family yeah. tree. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I have a laser and a full and a whole board up on the wall. You're looking like that screen screen grab of, of Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> it's always sunny. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway, I guess our advice is go and suffer or don't go and suffer in a different way with just the knowledge of you haven't been to medieval times. Yeah, that you just have not gone yeah. and that you will never and go. And you won't experience the joy of eating like a uh, cauliflower premium. wing while watching a man be beheaded. Yeah. Yeah. Having a premium steak of horse, <laughs> a prime <laughs> cut, a T-bone of a stallion. Bad. I think that's the thing. Whichever horse loses at jousting, whichever person on the horse loses at jousting, mm-hmm. the man is kicked out for life. Yeah. The horse is served. The horse is eaten. Yeah. Yeah. It's brutal, but that's how they did it in medieval times. <laughs> that's just what they did. <laughs> they listened to weird flute music and they did that shit. If you don't like it, get out of medieval times. Get out of medieval times. It's like the it's like it's it's in that one area, there are no laws. <laughs> Within medieval times. That's it's what only, I hear. It's only medieval laws. It's like, like, like if a woman talks too much, you have to put her in that weird head cage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That funny little head cage. <laughs> um, it's like going out to sea, you know? Ah. You go out to sea a certain extent. There are no laws. That's not true. Is that not? <laughs> it's not true. I've heard that a lot. <laughs> what are the, what's this law shit I'm thinking of? When, <laughs> You go far enough to see you can just like kill a man. Land, yeah. No, that's I don't think not you could true. kill a man. Probably you get torture one though. Sea law kicks in. Oh, is sea law different? Sea law. You're yeah. fucking with me. I'm not fucking with you. There's like there's sea law for international waters. International and is that more lax or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it? Then I don't why know do the people? Details, then why but do, I know that you don't just go to sea and there are no. You can do it. It's an anarchistic haven. In who's the middle to, of the sea. Well, who's to stop you? <laughs> is what I'm saying. And who's to know? It's sea. <laughs> no cops at sea. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I think there are no laws at sea, but that's just me. Okay. Yeah, you can continue thinking that. Are we moving on to the next question? We must. <laughs> um, last minute advice for this uh, person that I don't even really think needs it. Uh, go take antihistamines. As soon as you enter the place, they don't lock you in. You can leave <laughs> if true. you're just like, ah, I'm, I'm feeling a little itchy in the throat. Yeah. Uh, you can go. Mm-hmm. And uh, good luck. Ho- hope it goes well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next email. I'm going to rush through this episode, by the way. Okay. We've been going for, let me squint. What does that say? 18 minutes? Yes. I'm going to wrap it up in four minutes probably. Okay, uh, cool. Because I really, <laughs> yeah, I have to shit actually. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. No, I didn't go before. Yeah, you asked me multiple times. Are you sure that you don't have I, to go? I always ask you multiple times No, before. I was going to say like, yeah. I don't want this episode to be long. Uh-huh. Because I want to like. Shit. <laughs> so, please don't <laughs> let that be canon that I have to shit right now. Because I don't, okay? I do not. I don't want everyone imagining Thinking me having that. this shit throughout yeah. the rest of the, the, you know, the last 20 minutes of this episode. Your voice is getting increasingly strained. <laughs> I just get further away from the microphone. <laughs> so I'm eventually just shouting from a bathroom. <laughs> anyway, I uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> no, I don't have to share right now. I don't want this episode to go long, though, because we have to, like, have a quick turnaround on it. Let's go then. Next question. Next question I am also reading because mm-hmm. isn't this question, it's not directed towards you. It's kind of directed toward me. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of about you. Okay. You'll just have to tune in and see. <laughs> We're all waiting. All right. It's called Gamer Pickle. And it says, hey, Itchin Lily. So I am a gamer, a stoop, a dirty, stupid little gamer boy. I love video games. I have for a long time. I have a girlfriend who is not a gamer. However, I love to get her involved. 
She has shown vague interest before, and I've sat with her while she's piddled around in games once or twice. I obviously don't want to force it upon her, but it just seems like a super cool thing to share with my significant other. How do I suck her into my horrible little hobby? What if she gets better than me? How is Billy's Metroid playthrough going? Is this email just an attempt to get Mitch to talk about video games? I wish you both a very lovely week and I hope all is well. Sincerely, XX, this person's name written in Leet speak, XX. Good shit. Yeah. That's their game attack. Remember Leet? Yep. You were into that at one point? I played WoW for six months. <laughs> and there's your answer. <laughs> then there, there you go. <laughs> uh-huh. I actually fucked the guy that invented it. Invented <laughs> WoW? <laughs> no, that invented Leet speak. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Both yeah. of the guy that invented wow whoa that's crazy <laughs> now that that's a, a celebrity that's a fuck. claim to fame that's one of those like celebrity exceptions you know <laughs> to be like yeah we're we're in a relationship but if i ever get the opportunity to <laughs> to fuck the guy yeah who created to like World of Warcraft. give a rough little hand job to the guy that created <laughs> wow then i'm doing it and it's not cheating it's opportunistic fair okay you mm-hmm. we were just talking about this yesterday we were. You, I was, I was actually, it's weird. Uh, I was asking mm-hmm. you as we were laying in bed, mm-hmm. um, if uh, you play more video games now because of me. And you were like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we, you said, yeah. Ha- d- have you turned me into more of a gamer? Yeah, that's what I said. And unfortunately the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes I, I have. Um, <clears throat> but I did, e- you've just turned me into a different kind of gamer is the truth. Right. Um, you were like a fake girl gamer before. Oh my god. Like a wretched little... Jesus Christ. Like, you know how a girl sometimes isn't like as into it as <laughs> the boys? Or how she's like only into it to like impress impress a guy. Right, yeah. Yeah, how girls only play games because uh-huh. like they crave like, I guess like small May- gamer cock. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a tiny little Mountain Dew scented cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> Gamers wish their dick smelled like Mountain Dew. At least that's sweet. Gamers wish they were attracted to, enough to, to for girls to pretend to like video to games that. to fuck them. What the, what the fuck? What a insane concept <laughs> for gamers boys <laughs> to be like, you know why she's into this or this thing that they that they genuinely love. Yeah. That she's only into this to impress me. <laughs> and as their thumb press against their the little bird chest, <laughs> just just a small bit of Cheeto dust is imprinted onto their little to impress me. It's like, you you don't have that much to bring to the table, my guy. She just likes gaming. Yeah. Because it's fun. It's good, actually. But I do feel that um, as uh, uh, I've I've introduced a lot of people to gaming you as something that they can. You've introduced me to modern gaming. Modern gaming, Because yes. the thing is that I, st- I still only had the consoles that I've had for my whole life, which is a PlayStation 2. Mm-hmm. And a Dreamcast. No, the Dreamcast is a fucking... Yeah. Is a curveball in the right direction. Yeah. Not a lot of people just have one of those. Uh, yeah, I never got rid of mine. Ooh, you are so mm-hmm. lucky. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I still played the same games that were on it. Like, I've played through Sonic Adventure a hundred times, uh-huh. probably, you know? Um, Which is where this little crush developed. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this, Sonic, yes. Yeah, that little... Well, yeah, I like to say that's like the threshold where he went from cute to hot. Hot, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've spe- we've spoken about it before. Pre that, rounder, cute, post that, a bit more, you know, right. of a bad boy, There was round tummy Sonic. Yeah. And then there was like, ooh, I wonder what kind of dick Sonic has, <laughs> Sonic, you know? He doesn't have a dick, excuse you. He's smooth down there. <laughs> nah, it's not the drawings I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> no way. He's nude. He only wears like sh- shoes and gloves. I know but that. It's all, it's all on display. I know that, but on yeah. the on in drawings, though, oh. I'm specifically talking about the drawings where he's wearing a diaper. What websites have you been on? Uh, Rule thirty four. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that's definitely it. I, I thought I blocked that. <laughs> no. Okay. T- no, honey. <laughs> no, you didn't. I got around the parental guides. <laughs> yeah, I know your password. <laughs> I know the child lock password <laughs> child lock. that you put on to stop me from looking at furry Sonic fan art. Yeah. <laughs> but I would play Sonic a lot of times. And I would play through like Tomb Raider, Crash Bandicoot, <sighs> stuff like that. So good. On the PlayStation 1 um, and PlayStation 2. and But that was it. I was just replaying the old games from my childhood. I played like a lot of Soul Calibur mm-hmm. and stuff with other people. But that was literally it. And mm-hmm. I was like, there's... 
no, I, I, I knew nothing about modern games. So I was like, well, I can't afford a console. And more than that, I don't want a, con- a new console. I right. don't care about new games that are coming out because none of them are Sonic Adventure. Right. So th- here I am. Uh-huh. Uh, what a fool you were. Yeah. Because I went and bought you a Switch. Yes. And you think that was sort of the catalyst to, to, to you being like, hey, you know what? I'm going to play this, not just on the plane, but yeah. at home. I'm going to check out the other games that I like. Well, if I'm being like really truthful, I think the thing is that like I hated the idea of modern gaming because all I knew of it was being at people's houses and them all playing Smash. Smash, yeah. And then it being terrifying when they handed me a controller and everyone getting very mad at me when I was bad at it. Right. So then you were like, look, there are new games that are cute. Right. There are <laughs> and indie like, games. like fun to play yeah. and they're beautifully made with a lot of effort put into and them. And a lot of heart. And yeah, not that Smash is done. <laughs> Someone just shat it yeah. out. <laughs> every, <laughs> yeah, every so many years, Sakurai just kind of, eh, another Smash. It's as if the man almost, you know, doesn't, doesn't kill almost kill himself every fucking yeah. new Smash game. <laughs> But you introduced me to games that I liked more, that were more my speed and weren't intimidating, I think. Yeah. So I think Mm -hmm. that is all the time we have. No, uh, (laughs) that that is... uh, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Introduce your girlfriend to like uh, games that you think that she would like. There's many, many Mm -hmm. different types of games out there. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's very, it'd be very rare for your girlfriend to just like... Especially if she Not was like willing games to games as a whole. Yeah, just yeah. To, especially if she was willing to like piddle around in whatever games you handed her mm-hmm. that were yours. Mm-hmm. Help her find some games that are hers. You know, yeah. Or maybe start to save up to buy them a Switch or a Switch Lite or something, mm-hmm. and um, introduce them to some uh, cute games or some adventurous games. Or if they're into like, uh, if they're into even just puzzle games or if if they're into board games they can get into skyrim you know if they if they're mm-hmm. if they're into D and stuff mm-hmm. or uh if they're into like you know more long-winded adventures as opposed to platformers as opposed mm-hmm. to shooters they will not be into shooters or fighters <laughs> but that's like <laughs> just, just because they intimid- suck not because it's a girl well, just, just well no i just don't want a girl in the lobby is all <laughs> you know i don't want to accidentally be paired i don't want a chick on the team you know <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to recover from this. <laughs> Where do I go from here? <laughs> I Shit. need to make it obvious that I was joking <laughs> and uh, start my three part apology. <laughs> right Hang now. on. I'm getting out the notes. Up. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Hold up. I do apologize. <laughs> but yeah, I would say that it's just, it's more of a matter of not just being like, how do I get her to game? It's like, how do you get to, to, know what kind of games she might be interested in mm-hmm. is, is more is more the kind of thing like ask if she played games when she was younger maybe mm-hmm. she would like to replay through those kind of things you know right like we are doing with spyro currently yes but the, the, the reignited one it's beautiful oh it's so good yeah it's great but um yeah because you <laughs> you said that to me last night and then we were like yeah i just i used to just play old games like like Tomb Raider and Spyro, and I was like, "Well, I guess I'm still playing, We're still Spyro, playing Spyro right Spyro, now." Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do do stuff like that a lot, mm-hmm. or just like revisit old games in the yeah, yeah. But um, also, a little suggestion would be uh, co-op games. Um, yes. Or sometimes I call like certain games. I'll call them girlfriend games because <laughs> they'll just be like <laughs> games that I I wouldn't play alone. Mm-hmm. But I really love playing with you. And these are these like slower moving, story based, mm. experience them together, mm-hmm. immersive mm-hmm. type of games that I think that would really get and, you know, have her play the majority of that, especially early on, you mm-hmm. know, like uh, when you and I played Firewatch. Firewatch, Firewatch is, is a great, great example. Yeah. Firewatch is a great example. Gone Home is a great Gone example. Gone Home is such a fucking good yeah, example. Yeah. Because also you can't like, lose at those games yeah, really so like you don't feel at whatever. bad at it right you know uh-huh. yeah and it's like just really interesting to experience and they have great stories mm-hmm. they're not like super hard platformers and mm-hmm. then from there move on to some other stuff that uh you and i played um what is that a really good platformer that we played the uh, co-op one uh unravel two Yes. That was super fun. That's great. And it had a bit of challenge toward the end, but you can mm-hmm. still make it through the game and you work together the entire time. Yeah. That might make her really enjoy gaming. Mm-hmm. And it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so it was so pretty. Some actual recommendations for us, mm-hmm. like advice and actual solid recommendations yeah. there that you could give a go. Yeah. So yeah. 
Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. Last question. Last question. Not gaming related, sadly, but we've got that all out of our system. Mm -hmm. This question is called a really cool but odd flat sound radio pickle. Nice. And it goes. Hi, Billy and Mitchy. Another loyal cat pissing, shitting, pickle eating, artsy fartsy fan jacking in for another episode of fun. I have a funky flat sound radio pickle. I'm a big fan of flat sound radio. Like that, I like the ambient music that it plays. I love it. And the album Somewhere in the Distance, Somewhere Towards the Mountains. I love them so much that I listen to them all day, every day at yeah. my day job. What I really love about this music is how it helps me focus. My pickle. I have virtually no focus all of the time. I'm talking to my therapist about seeing a psychiatrist to be diagnosed with ADD, ADHD or something of that sort because I have literally no focus. I'm always distracted and multitasking is the only way to get anything done because I start 20 tasks at once. However, it seems like I can only focus when I listen to Mitch's ambient noise and music. (laughs) This in turn means I can't listen to anything else at work or when I'm trying to get things done. As much as I love flat sound and this music, I would love to be able to listen to other music while getting work done. Please don't hate me. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You'll advertise a pickle shortage, so I figured I'd throw my funky one in the mix. It's definitely a little moldy, though. Don't eat it. Have a wonderful day slash week slash lifetime, and don't drink Corona jacking out this person's name. All right. This is an easy one to get to. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, This has Mm -hmm. been All the Space in Between. I don't see a problem here. Mm -hmm. Uh, So probably change nothing <laughs> and we'll yeah we'll talk to everybody next week no, been, no, you, that can't be your advice your what? advice can't Why? be don't change anything <laughs> oh yeah we're like about ah oh, we're only like 30 minutes in <laughs> all right uh, this could be like a short episode yeah i think mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i guess i would say thank mm-hmm. you so much for listening keep it up yeah. exactly as you're doing oh yeah right I don't, yeah, again no issue to yeah. be reported here mm-hmm. um <laughs> but uh i appreciate it I'm honored. Oh. I'm humbled. Yeah. Uh, Privileged. Yeah, someone, please, might please say. don't. Yeah, don't change who you are. Oh, you know? Okay. <laughs> don't let the world make you think that you have to be different. Don't let the bastards grind you down. Don't say let you the have man to give anyone else any, any Spotify listens. place. <laughs> of course. I think that this balance you've created is natural and beautiful. Oh. This ebb and flow of life that you've kind of, you know, whimsically fallen into. All right. I think it's inspiring (laughs) and i think yeah if other people could do the same Hmm. as in only exclusively listen to me oh yeah yeah to the point where they have a problem listening to others yeah like a brain problem right yeah like a diagnosable issue (laughs) with focus if more people could have that and then i can can cure that would be great right. for my ego. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Uh, no, my serious advice uh, would be I, I'm i I'm sort of the same way when it comes to like distraction. You're I like, kind of funny because you also listen to your own ambient music when you're focusing on something. What can I say, guys? It's good. <laughs> it's if you haven't good. checked it out yet, it's uh, – <laughs> hey, this is two people already are saying it's helping you focus. It's real good. It's all this – what is it? It's uh, somewhere in the distance, somewhere toward, toward the mountains. Yeah. It's available on Spotify. <laughs> If it turns into the only thing you listen to, uh, Oops. Hey, what what's can the, I say? Sorry for making a perfect ambient yeah. album. <laughs> hey, is it Shit. My, I is that guess, a crime? Yeah. Are we, uh, we're at sea. No crimes. You're right. No crimes at sea. I'm sorry. I actually made that album at sea <laughs> where there were no rules. So <laughs> I decided to make the perfect album. <laughs> I know it's true. I'll listen to my ambient stuff uh, leisurely because yes. with my ambient stuff, I'm like more so – I'm not writing as much as I'm capturing, mm-hmm. and it, uh, I work very, very hard on it. But it's it's not like my voice or mm-hmm. my this or that. So I I'm I'm a big fan of the ambient stuff that I make, just as the things that I listen to. Mm-hmm. And I'm really trying to create ambient music that I would listen to. And I did so good of a job at that that I listen to it, especially while I'm like writing or mm-hmm. trying to do other things like that. But um, real advice this time. Yeah. Um, listen to similar artists. Yeah, that was what I was going to say too. Get into ambient music. Mm-hmm. It's a little it's a little bit difficult because ambient makes up a very small amount of my discography. Mm-hmm. So if you go to Spotify and you go to similar artists, you have like uh, – Yeah, it doesn't really – You don't have ambient artists. You have uh, Fox Academy, yeah. you know, or, um, and people like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, – ambient artists uh you'd have to you'd have to look somewhere else uh the uh you know the old school ambient artists obviously uh brian eno 
Yes. Uh, huge. I'm sure you've heard of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to listen to discrete music before bed every single night. And in fact, mm-hmm. you can hear a little bit of discrete music in the background of sleep. Mm. Somewhere on the album during like an interlude in between songs or something, you mm-hmm. can hear me like listening to it in a very, very small portion just because that's how much I was listening to their work at the time. And this is like work from like, you know, the 70s and 80s. Brian, you know, hears this and fucking flat. <laughs> Sleep as an instant. album is canceled. No. No, it's been up since 2012. My fucking golden, <laughs> my golden egg laying goose. <laughs> my golden goose who lays the golden egg. <laughs> my, oh, fuck, Brian. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Mr. I'll pay Mr. For it. Mr. Eno. <laughs> Please. Please. Uh, no, it's like very, very much in the background. Yes. And, um, but modern artists, mm-hmm. um, I uh, I'm going to give a couple suggestions here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is this is not this is not to man. I'm going to leave out a ton of really good artists here, Yeesh. really really good artists. Mm-hmm. And I do apologize, but just two of my personal favorites that I go back to mm-hmm. um, myself. Actually, to make less people feel bad, I'm just going to give one suggestion. Okay, I'm going to give just the one suggestion, and I'm going to leave out a ton of people. But for this person listening, mm-hmm. go to YouTube and search R Benny. Yeah. Just the letter R Mm -hmm. and then a space and then Mm B-E-N-Y, R Benny, and they make really beautiful modular work. Mm -hmm. I can listen to it for a long time and they Mm -hmm. also have stuff up on Bandcamp. They may have some stuff on Spotify as well Mm -hmm. and I uh, I even have one of their tapes. Yes. Uh, They're really, really cool and really, really good to listen to. Really, I think so underappreciated, but I think most ambient artists in the it's just an underappreciated it's, genre. <laughs> it's a very underappreciated genre. Yeah. Yes. So mm-hmm. everybody's underappreciated. Mm-hmm. R. Benny is one of my favorites and one of uh, – it's he's – he is uh, a lot of people's favorites. Yeah. And uh, that's for uh, that's for a good reason. That's not for no reason. He, mm-hmm. he, uh, he is really good and really, really talented. He takes such delicate, beautiful, simple work and makes it very emotional and very good. Mm-hmm. And if you're into actually watching some of this stuff, his YouTube videos are very pretty and very good. They're not so... But that would not help that someone focus if they were watching Oh, the right, video. right, right. They just listen so to R. Benny on Bandcamp or yes. hopefully Spotify <laughs> if good old R. Benny is uh, smart and putting their stuff on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I a good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Oh, wait, no. Let me do uh, another shameless uh, suggestion. Mm-hmm. Um, Pew's music. <laughs> Course. Well, this is what I was gonna say. I was gonna say that I don't really listen to ambient music, but uh-huh. I do listen to noise music when I'm yeah. focusing because I like just a harsh hiss in my ears. So if you want less good. ambient and yeah. more drone, mm-hmm. yeah, then I have a very good friend who makes uh, who makes music under the name Skin, um, and their band cape. Camp, I believe, is just skinnoise.bandcamp.com, mm-hmm. Though I will check that, and if it's yeah, type it in to make sure. Bup, 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 bup. That's right. It is skinnoise.bandcamp.com. And there is some really beautiful stuff on there mm-hmm. that I love listening to. And uh, they also, they supported an artist called, uh, God, I don't know how to say it, Lingua Ignota, mm-hmm. uh, who is a noise artist who incorporates a lot of like weird chanting into her stuff and it's a rare bit of noise music that has vocals but it's like vocals are almost indistinguishable so it's not like distracting at all yeah and they are two of my favorite things to listen to when i am writing for my zines in particular oh nice mm-hmm. really yeah i like it it's very artistic it's very nice i like it a lot huh. so those would be my shouts cool but pew's music skin noise it's very good i love it i would agree i also love it mm-hmm. uh if you want to go for something more drone mm-hmm. uh, also a uh, very uh cassette forward uh, uh yes it's 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 nice mm-hmm. i love it a lot and i have for a while now ever since you introduced me yeah also they're just an amazing and cool person that's true So i love that as well <laughs> uh but yeah my honest suggestion would be just listening to other 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 artists you mm-hmm. know I'm yeah. proud of There's what I. There's a whole genre out though. I am proud of what I made with um, my ambient music album. Mm-hmm. I'm incredibly, incredibly proud. But ambient music as a whole is very underappreciated, and mm-hmm. a lot of it, a lot of really, really good stuff just kind of falls through the cracks. Yeah. You know. Uh, so keep on looking and there's a lot of independent artists out there making really beautiful, touching ambient work. It's mm-hmm. not just me. Uh, if you like. My album, you will love lots in the genre that yeah. inspired me to make it, you mm-hmm. know, because songwriting is my main thing, but ambient, drone, noises, sound mm-hmm. has been a big part of flat sound 
since the beginning. Yes. Um, but it makes up such a little part of my discography. There are other artists who dedicate their whole discography to that. Mm -hmm. And I believe they're even better than me. God, there's so much out there. And it's mm -hmm. exciting to get into. Yeah. It's exciting. Just dive into this whole pool of music that you didn't really know about before. You know, the cool. uh, I told you that uh, Jake introduced me to a genre called, oh gosh, it's an old, it's almost like a meme genre. <laughs> um, but it's called Dungeon Synth. Oh. Have you heard of it? No. Dungeon Synth. Okay. Jake introduced me to it recently. Yeah. And it's a genre that's like, it's it's a serious genre that's been out since uh, Jake was showing me like uh, old recordings, recorded a tape in the 90s and stuff. But it's called Very Dungeon sick. Synth. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, it is what you would expect. <laughs> dungeon sounds and synth. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's more so dungeon Simps that sounds like it's played in a dungeon. Not even really. <laughs> no. And in fact, let me actually just Google really quick to make sure that I'm even getting the genre right. Because I don't want to have to edit in another beep. Hey, guys, that's uh, me. I'm editing. And, hey, it turns uh, out I was talking shit the whole time. <laughs> dungeon synth. There mm -hmm. it is. Uh, dungeon synth is a subgenre of dark ambient music that emerged in the late 80s and early 90s. Cool. Um, and from what Jake played me, it was, it was, it was like, God, it just sounded like... It just sounded like um, D and D music, but all oh. done on synths. <laughs> cool. And the ones that were recorded to like cassette in the '90s were like especially very, very beautiful to me. Mm. And I say that it's a meme in the same way that um, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that really aesthetic uh, uh, genre of music that everyone sort of uh, the one that was wave in the name vapor wave. <gasps> That's it. Vaporwave. Remember Vaporwave. I say it's a meme genre in mm -hmm. the same way that Vaporwave is sort of a meme. Yeah. You know? But it's good. And I'm assuming so was Vaporwave before it was turned into a meme. <laughs> but we don't know because we didn't listen to it. We, so, will, yeah. we mm -hmm. will never know. No. <laughs> but um, with that said, mm -hmm. I think we're out of time. We have to be. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been All the Space Between. My name is Mitch. My name is Billy. Thank you for listening to this little episode of ours. If you would like us to answer a question with some, we, we gave a lot of genuine advice and uh, recommendations in this episode, especially about eating horse meat. Mm -hmm. uh, that was straight from the heart. Right. You uh, have to check out Dolly Parton's restaurant <laughs> where she serves, serves horse. horse yeah. <laughs> but if you would like to email us for some of this audio gold really mm -hmm. that we give we're giving away for free, free if you can believe gold. it then please send us an email at all the space in between at gmail.com and if you'd like to listen to any one of these episodes that we put on god it's it's just on 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 spotify and on apple music and on youtube uh and also on our what, what am i how am i how am i delivering this right now <laughs> I, I really <laughs> kind of cornered myself. Yeah, I really got to try. I, I don't oh, know how Jesus. to. I don't know how to throw it to you. Um, Just give give me it. The, we also have a website. You can listen to every single one of our episodes on our website. Is all the space in between dot com. There we go. Nice. Hey, we're almost. We're almost <laughs> the smoothest. Yeah. We're sixty something episodes in, and I'm still just like, and, I, and I'm just like, I'm you know, just fumbling where, where, the pass every time. <laughs> you you passed it to me, and I fumbled it, and that happens more often than I'd like to admit. Um, thank you everyone so much for listening. New episodes every Monday. We will talk to you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.